Welcome everyone, this is CSIS 3020 Web Programming and Design. This is the fourth week, okay? First video lecture. Where's index? Okay, index please. Now this is going back to the web servers. Web servers typically look for one specific page to start your application, to start your website, okay? The web server that we're going to be using in this course is going to be Apache. Apache web server comes from the Apache Software Foundation, okay? And it's an open source. For those of you who are not familiar, uh, the Apache Software Foundation is probably one of the biggest software foundations. It's open source uh, in the sense that thousands of developers worldwide put their heads together and they're producing really cool, really sophisticated software. Frameworks that are being used in the industry today. In fact, if you do a statistical analysis of websites that are running today worldwide, and we're talking about millions if not billions of websites running today okay probably between 60 to 70 percent of those websites are run by Apache web server okay it's not the only web server that's out there but it's the one that has the majority of websites um, um, hosting them so we're gonna learn how to use the, that w Apache web server Okay, an Apache web server will look for index.html as your home page. So please make sure that you um, name your home page index. That these guys have, they have thousands. I mean, if you browse through all the designs, literally, they have 130 pages of just 20 per page or something like that of designs, different designs. And these tell you how to use a logo and blend it in with the page. And they actually give you the code so that you can look at it how it's done. Both the cascading style sheet and the HTML. So make use of it. I'm not asking you to create something out of scratch. You know, it's 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 really ridiculous to, to expect people today to create a website from scratch okay because there are so many so much out there that you can start from you can improve you can customize but it's ridiculous to start from scratch okay so get ideas look around grab pieces of the code from here and there and customize it you have to learn how to do cascading style sheets in HTML to be able to do that customize it to your needs but that's the objective of this course okay let's dive right into JavaScript I'm going to go through tons of examples that are in the that are in the uh, a source code of the book okay and but I want you guys to read from the book because I'm, I'm not going to be covering absolutely every everything that is in the book but you guys need to know it I need you guys to read chapter 6 7 and 8 from the book 6 7 and 8 and we're going to be covering JavaScript tonight fourth week and next week, fifth week, so weeks four and five, we're going to have to get really good at JavaScript. Because you guys are going to put JavaScript into your websites. And we're going to see plenty of examples of what type of functionality you can add to your website through JavaScript. Validations, help, menus a whole bunch of stuff okay so the million dollar question what is JavaScript 
Anybody? What is JavaScript? Yeah, it's a scripting language, but it's the difference between JavaScript and Java. It's a client side, right? It's a client side programming language. So, what does that mean? Wait a minute. There's Java as a programming language, and there's JavaScript. And if you look at their code, their text is very similar. Okay? However, JavaScript is a subset of the big Java language. In fact, JavaScript is type less, which means that variables can hold any type of values. One variable can hold an integer, can hold a string, can hold whatever you want, an object. It can hold whatever you want. So it's, it's not type safe as Java is. Okay? And there's a whole bunch of other things that you can do in Java that you cannot do in JavaScript because JavaScript is a s really a subset. But why was then JavaScript created if we can get the bigger version in Java? Well, because you wanted, uh, back in 1996, 97, when the first websites and intranet type of websites started starting to show up, you wanted functionality on the client as opposed to the server. We started noticing back in 1996, 1997, that websites were doing a lot of client, go to the server, grab some functionality, dump it. Then, for anything else, go to the server, get the server validation, and then dump it. And it was a really... the bandwidth use was really bad because we, you, we, you were constantly dumping a lot of information between the client and the server. And for things as simple as validations um, and... Um, extra functionality that could have been done on the client. Okay? So somebody said, why don't we do the following? Let's just provide the main content to the client and then provide a whole bunch of code that will run not on the server but on the client. Get the browser to do some stuff, you know, run other than just render HTML. And that's when JavaScript was born. Okay? So JavaScript is a bunch of Java code. It's actually called script code. Okay? And we're gonna see we're gonna get to see plenty of examples that will show you the difference. Script code that gets downloaded to your browser, just like the HTMLs, just like the images, just like the cascading style sheets, but that will get executed locally on your machine. Okay? Now if you guys go to JavaScript I mean, to the W3 schools, you will see that there is also a section on JavaScript. And I suggest, if you have the time, go ahead and take a look at all the tutorials that are in there. Again, it's the same paradigm as with the cascading style sheets and the HTML. You go to try yourself, you modify the JavaScript code, you immediately see the result. Okay? So it's really cool in that sense. Um, but that's basically what it is. So it's code that gets sent through the pipe to your browser, the client, to run it locally. Okay? Alright. Now, that will not work unless you allow JavaScript to run locally on your browser. And you have the choice of not allowing your browser to run JavaScript. Some people believe that it's dangerous because it's running something locally on your machine. Okay? Other people say, I don't care. I want the dynamic stuff that shows up on the websites. The dynamic stuff that shows uh, on the websites that I go to. So if you, I'm going to, in the case of Firefox, Internet Explorer and all the other will have something equivalent. If you go to Tools, Options, 
there is a section under content where you can say check enable JavaScript or unchecked enable JavaScript. Okay, so I want to warn you, you better ch uh, check up on your browsers before we start all these examples that this is checked. If this is not checked, none of the examples that we're going to try tonight are going to um, work on your browser. Okay. Any questions so far? So, let's go into the first example. Welcome. And again, you guys will be able to see all the samples that I'm uh, going through tonight in, a, in an Eclipse project called CSIS 3020 Week 4. Okay? It's another project that I created with all these samples that we're going to be covering. So let's take a look at welcome.html. This is our first JavaScript HTML. Notice the following. Is that big enough for you guys or should I make it bigger? A little bit bigger? Sure. Window. Preferences. Appearance, colors and fonts. Text font is 12. Let's edit. Put 14. Is that better? Okay. There it is. So this is a very simple exercise of an HTML page with JavaScript. Notice that it has the same HTML tags, but inside the header, notice that there's absolutely no content in the body. Okay? Inside the header, you have a script tag. And the script has a property called type, where you specify this is going to be text JavaScript. So here it comes text, but it's going to be in the JavaScript language. Okay? Now, since this is between tags, the browser is going to try to render that. It's going to try to render the JavaScript code. And you don't want them to waste time or effort in trying to render JavaScript code. So what do you do? You put your JavaScript code in as comments. Do you guys remember these tags I told you about? Open tag, exclamation point, dash, dash, is how you open comments. How do you close comments? Dash, dash, closing tag. Everything between that open tag and that end tag will be totally ignored by the browser. That's where you put that's where you put the JavaScript code. And what is the JavaScript code that we put? Document dot right line. You're gonna see that in JavaScript there are about six or seven really important objects. Objects that you're gonna have to learn how to use because they're gonna give you a lot of functionality. One of them and the most important is document. Document is what the browser, your browser, is working on. The page that is trying to render, that page that is that your browser is trying to render, that's your document object. Okay? And you're gonna have a lot of functionalities, a lot of functions, methods, and properties available to you so you can modify the document. One of the methods is called right line. So this is how you put content into your page. You tell the document object to write line and then you pass a string. What are we passing? HTML, aren't we? A heading. We're passing an H1 heading. Okay? So let's let's check out this uh page. Bless you. Welcome to JavaScript programming. Let's inspect it. Wait a minute. Look at this. There is stuff showing in my body. 
Do you guys see this? This is my body, and there's stuff in my body. But the page that generate the the source page that generated that web page didn't have anything in the body. So what does that mean? The JavaScript can actually provide your entire content. In fact, today there are frameworks out there that say, you know what? All websites, all the content, all the styles, absolutely all the functionality in your website is going to come up out of JavaScript. And, and it's an example of that website, it's, it's, uh, that framework is something called Google Web Toolkit. And I don't know if you guys have heard of it or not. GWT, Google Web Toolkit, says that absolutely all the content and the cascading style sheets and everything, all, everything that shows in this place in the website should be generated out of JavaScript. So forget about HTML. Forget about CSS. Everything is being produced by JavaScript. In fact, the whole communication between the client and the server is also JavaScript. Okay, But that's another course that I teach here at NOVA, CSIS 4900, if you guys are interested. Anyway, so this is our first example. Let's keep on going. We're going to go through these samples very quickly, so I want you to, if you don't understand something, please raise your hand. Welcome to. So now we're going to go into welcome to. Welcome to shows almost the same one, but now we're adding styles. See that? We have a heading with style, color, magenta. Now, notice this. Style is a property, then you have an equal sign, and then you put the value. And the value typically is what? Name value pairs separated by columns within double quotes. What happens if you put a double quote within a string? It thinks that this string stops right there, right? So how am I going to put a, a string, uh, double quote inside a string if I wanted to display a double quote? This is what it's called escape character. And I don't know if you've seen these. You guys have seen this in Java or in C programming. This is how you put a double quote inside a string because you want to display a double quote, not telling it here's where the string ends. It's preceded by the backslash. Okay, so this is you telling it I want to put a double quote. It's called escape character. So we're putting in a heading with style, color, magenta. Then we're providing the welcome to JavaScript. And notice that we're doing concatenation. OK? So we are concatenating welcome to JavaScript with programming. Let's run it. See that? And you can change this if you want. Refresh it. Did I save it? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to the wrong one. <laughs> I have to go to the right one, otherwise it won't work. Um, I have two versions here. Let's just run it from here. Open with the browser. There it is. Okay. So not only content but also styles can be coming out of the JavaScript. Let's take a look at a third example. In here you're actually adding breakpoints. See this? You have a heading where it says welcome to and there's a break. JavaScript and there's another break. Okay. So if we open it with the browser, 
this is what it's going to look like. Okay. Now, who is who is in charge of saying displayed in three different lines? Is it JavaScript or the browser? It's the browser, right? This is what is causing the one string to be broken into three different lines. It's not the JavaScript. The JavaScript is telling it to write in one line that. But it's not. It's actually writing it in three because we have these break tags. So remember, the way that it looks is going to be defined by the HTML, not by JavaScript. JavaScript is just producing the content. Yes. No, what it's actually what is actually happening is before okay. The server feeds the whole page. Welcome three HTML to the browser. The browser starts from the top and say uh, starts from the top and says, Oh, this is gonna be an XML type of or an XHTML and it goes right through and it sees the script tag first then the body. So it will execute the script code first before it renders the body. And we're going to see plenty of examples later on where you're going to have content in the body and you're going to have a JavaScript in the scripting tag. And you will see that it will produce the content from the JavaScript first and then the body last. That's a good question. Let's keep on going. Look at this one. This is probably the second most important object that you're going to be encountering in JavaScript. Window. Window manipulates your browser. You want to manipulate where your page is being rendered, you use Window. Remember, your page is document. The browser where it's the page is being rendered is window. Okay? And in fact, you can create your own windows. Look at this. Window alert. What is that doing? Window alert. It's popping up a window. You guys want to see it? Here it is. Open with the browser. Pops up. Welcome to JavaScript programming. You click OK and then shows click refresh. Do you guys see that? When I go to the page, what's in the body? Nothing. First thing that shows up is a pop-up. Which I don't believe in pop-ups to be honest with you. I mean I don't like being going to a website and getting all these kind of pop-ups alerting you about stuff, but it's old school. And then at the end, you see this? So where is it coming from? From here. The window alert gets shown first because it's in the script inside the header. And then the content in the body shows last. Okay. Now alert will not go away until you hit that OK button. Okay. All right. Next. We're still recording. Yeah, we're still recording. So now we go to addition. So we're going to see an example. Oh, I'm sorry. This was welcome four. We're going to go into welcome five. Look at this one. Window prompt. Let me find out if it has. Yep, here it is. Do you want to see all the different methods that are available on your window object? Alert. 
at OB at OA capture clear inter clear interval clear timeout all these are the different functions and methods that are available to you in the window object set timeout we're going to see plenty of examples with those window prompt what does window prompt do it's going to be a pop up that will ask you for something and you have to input that something and that something that comes back will be put on a variable oh so how do you declare variables this is how you declare variables var and then the name of the variable remember javascript has the same syntax as c or or c plus or uh, java which means you have to put that semicolon at the end of every statement okay so this is how it looks like notice that nothing is rendered in the body executes the javascript this is a window prompt. It says, please enter your name. And it will show whatever you pass as the string in the prompt, in the window prompt. It will show in there. In this case, we passed, please enter your name. So when you put your name, click OK. All right? When you click OK, it's done executing the JavaScript. In fact, it will do document run line hello, then it will put my name, welcome to programming, and then it will put the content of the body. That's how this shows up. Questions? Okay, and then the last one, welcome sex. This is a pretty cool one. We're going to run it. First of all, let me check what time it is. My computer is in 7 in the morning. I don't think that's right, isn't it? 7.02 at night. Click OK. And we're going to run it. Open in the browser. Notice that in a similar fashion, please enter your name. I put my name and it says good evening. 